Hi everyone, my name is Izzy and welcome to the Padilla Bay Reserve. Padilla Bay is home to 8,000 acres of eelgrass. We can see this green eelgrass meadow at low tide. Eelgrass is a very important habitat for so many animals. Looking out at the bay right now, we may not be able to see many of those animals, but if you come with me, we can go take a closer look. All right, welcome to the Padilla Bay Interpretive Center Aquarium. All of these animals in this aquarium came from Padilla Bay and the Padilla Bay Estuary, as well as the Greater Salish Sea Estuary. So over here, we have our starry flounder. They're a type of flatfish. And when they're really young, their eyes actually rotate to one side of their head. This here is bully. And we named him Bully because he steals all the fish. Over here, hidden in the beautiful barnacle apartment complex is our pygmy red rock crab. And here we have our green sea urchin. The scientific name for this green sea urchin is Strongliocentrosis droebachiensis. and actually has the second longest scientific name in the books. Next, we have our beautiful painted anemones. And up here, we have a little cuddle puddle of sea stars and even a sea cucumber. Sea stars and sea cucumbers actually belong to the same phylum, kind of like a family called Echinodermata. And over here, we have some little fish. These really tiny ones are called three-spined sticklebacks. And these slightly larger fish are a species of perch. And down here, we have some more sea stars and some more beautiful anemones. Next up, we have our middle cylinder. Now in here, we have a lot of really tiny creatures that are excellent at camouflaging or blending in with their surroundings. Let's look a little closer and see if we can find them. If you look closely, you can see a fish that almost looks like a blade of eelgrass called a bay pipefish. Bay pipefish are actually related to seahorses and just like seahorses, the males are the ones that give birth. And over here, we have a big lump on a pole. That lump is actually a type of fish called a Pacific spiny lump sucker. Now I'm feeding them a little mix of mysis shrimp, plankton, and little bits of Pacific herring. What do you notice about some of these tiny creatures? Now, hiding inside of this giant barnacle is a type of fish called a grunt sculpin. This little sculpin is very good at camouflaging inside of giant barnacles. Scuba divers claim that they can actually hear grunt sculpins make a sort of grunt or squeal underwater. All right, now I'm going to feed this tank. If you look up close, you can see some gunnels or blennies. You can find these fish in the intertidal zone under rocks. They may look like eels, but they're actually a type of fish because they have those pectoral fins. You can also see our poacher, another species of fish that looks kind of sharp and pokey, as well as our sea stars, the ochre and the leather sea star.
All right, and over here we have our tide tank. Now down here you can see one of our favorite animals, Wolfie, the wolf eel. Now just like those gunnels and blennies, Wolfie is not a true eel because Wolfie also has pectoral fins right behind their head. Now I'm gonna feed Wolfie some Pacific herring. Now Wolfie can be kind of shy and a little bit lazy, so I hope Wolfie will come out of their den so you can see just how long Wolfie is. Wolf eels can grow up to eight feet long. They mate for life. They can live up to 30 years old. And although they may look scary, they can actually be really friendly. Some scuba divers have befriended wolf eels on their dives, where the wolf eels will come out of their dens and go onto the diver's shoulders like a pet for the duration of the dive. I even know a wolf eel that loves belly rubs, like a little puppy. So another ferocious predator that we have in this tank is the sunflower star. Although sea stars might look slow, the sunflower star can move about one meter or three feet per minute. That's because they have 16 to 24 arms or rays with over 15,000 little tube feet that help them move so fast. Now, if you look closely, you can see these fuzzy little hair-like projections between the sea star's spines. And those little fuzzies are how the sea star breathes, called gills. Now here we have our cabazon, one of the largest species of sculpin. They're really good at camouflaging, so see if you can spot them. All right, last but not least, we have our brand new touch tank. So exciting. But right now, our touch tank is holding a very special nursery. This container holds baby, baby, baby fish. The fish you see with the fin that's furling around like a skirt is a little sail fin sculpin. And these other tiny fish that kind of look like little erasers are baby grunt sculpins. And there's another animal in here too, another animal that's really good at camouflaging. But this animal isn't a fish. This animal has eight arms. Yes, we have a baby octopus. They're so cute. Thank you so much for joining us as we explored the incredible diversity of creatures below the tide line at Padilla Bay. The Interpretive Center remains closed to the public, but you are welcome to come visit the public trails, the beach, and the mudflats outside. We'll see you next time.